Here are five things to get you started on your Railway Empires 2 journey today. Let's go. All right, here's five things we're going to talk about that you really need to know when you start Railway Empires. Let's get into it here. So what we're talking about here is I'm going to show you just in a custom little custom map here real quick. Um, this is Jacksonville to Tallahassee and some of the rural outlying properties here. So the first thing we're going to actually talk about is is we're going to talk about route layout when you first start a game. And we're going to talk about like here I'm showing between Jacksonville and Tallahassee with a couple of rurals in between. And you can see we connect over to Pensacola and we have a few others in here. So in track layout, the first thing you want to do is kind of have that big picture view. Where am I going? What am I doing? Obviously, your task list is going to drive some of this. The first thing you want to do is just you want to start making money working towards those tasks. This is where I started was in Jacksonville. That's my hometown. So I'm moving I automatically kind of look at the big picture on this, zoom out and kind of look at the big picture on this. So first thing I did when I started this map was I put down a track, a station here in Jacksonville. I put down a station in Brownstop and I put down a station in Tallahassee. My track setup or track layout started out with a track going from Jacksonville to Brownstop to Tallahassee and Tallahassee to Brownstop back to Jacksonville. Very simple very easy um i went with a, a two track setup i put my gridiron as you can see right here is my gridiron right at the beginning i put a little uh a supply tower right here to supply the trains in between and then we got brown stop gridiron on both sides of brown stop and then tallahassee gridiron on this one side of tallahassee then the tallahassee stop that's all i did to begin with on my track setup first so that situation right there would start making me money. That is number five on our list. So number four is, is the flow of the track. So we look at this track between Jacksonville and Tallahassee, and we're thinking, okay, I had the forethought to create a station at Jacksonville, Brownstop, and Tallahassee, put down two tracks, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the flow. Just hovering over my route that I have from from Jacksonville, Brownstop to Tallahassee, you can see the flow of my track. I did it kind of like a road, right? We drive on the right side, so right side and left side coming back. Trains make the decision when they get to the gridiron, when they're going into the station, which side they need to be on. If one side's occupied, they'll go to the other side and vice versa. It's the same if they're just passing through. Maybe it's an express going from Jacksonville to Tallahassee, doesn't stop in Brownstop. So what happens is if there's a train on the right side of the track, stop delivering, it'll jump over to the other side and come back once it passes Brown Stop. So that's number four is really just getting that flow down. And what I'll tend to do is I'll do like this to begin with. When you create that secondary track alongside your primary track that you just created, it's created at a reduced cost. So it's, and it's really quick right at the beginning. So you set this one track. As soon as you build it, it automatically gives you an option to build another one right away. You can go into the, uh, the track planning tool and you can hit on the track direction right here. It's the second icon. And that'll give you the ability to click these and change the direction or stop them altogether. Number three is providing the town with the goods that they need. So don't start off trying to give concrete to Jacksonville because if you look in here, you will see that they don't use concrete until 70,000 citizens. Well, currently they're at 22,000 citizens, so they need all the basic stuff like sugar, wheat, corn, lumber, all that stuff to grow. And as long as you're meeting those needs, well, the town will grow. And as you can see here, just in this situation, Jacksonville's growing and Tallahassee's double growing with two green arrows. So I'm giving them everything they need with literally three trains. 
Number two is train station buildings. And when we talk about train station buildings, we're looking at these additional ex extras that you can build up here, the maintenance depot, the dispatch hall, the restaurant, the warehouse, and the hotel. Obviously, Brown Stop doesn't need a hotel, a warehouse, a restaurant. Now, could they benefit from a dispatch hall? Yes. Could they benefit from a maintenance depot? Yes. The way I usually do it, is in my rural locations. Like this is Brown Stop and Campbell Rest. And if you look at Campbell Rest, I would create a maintenance depot down here. That would be the number one thing I would create down here would be a maintenance depot. I know the train that's coming here from Campbell's Rest to Jacksonville to deliver back to Campbell's Rest, maybe over to Tallahassee. This train right here, I know that it's always going back to Campbell's Rest. So, and I'm not going to put a warehouse there. I'm not going to put anything else there, just a maintenance depot and maybe a dispatch, something to increase the dispatch of the, uh, the speed of the train. It's always going to get repaired there. If you put it in the cities, you kind of waste the cities. The cities really need the warehouses. Like what I will do is I will put a warehouse like in Tallahassee because I knew this was going to be a bigger map over to Pen Pensacola. So what I did is I put warehouses in Tallahassee provided them with all the basic goods, kept pushing all the basic goods there between there and Jacksonville. If you have a warehouse here for, let's say, lumber from Jacksonville to Brown Stop to Tallahassee, and it's dropping all the lumber and grain in Tallahassee, I can make a train down here for Pensacola. It'll go, it'll go Pensacola to Pastor's train station to Tallahassee. Well, there's no grain down here. So instead of running a train from Brown Stop all the way to Pensacola, all I have to do is run it from Brown Stop to Tallahassee, the train from Pensacola to Tallahassee, and Tallahassee back to Pensacola. That train going from Tallahassee back to Pensacola will pick up the grain from here and take it back to Pensacola, thus causing Pensacola to grow as well. Now, obviously, only the excess of the grain goes into the warehouse and stuff like that. But number one, better utilization of your engines, basically the routes and the engines and everything I'm going. So what I did here is, again, I created a warehouse in Tennessee, uh, Tallahassee, and then I ran an engine from Jacksonville to Brown Stop, stopped here at Brown Stop, then went on to Tallahassee. So it would pick up passengers from Jacksonville that were going to Tallahassee. It would take those passengers. It would stop at Brown Stop, pick up wheat and lumber, and then go on to Tallahassee, drop the passengers, all the wheat, all the wood, pick up more passengers, and anything else that they, like they made beer here, so the grain is going to help them make the beer. It would pick up the beer, let's say, and it would go back to Jacksonville, and it would drop off the beer and the passengers, thus making... Uh, one engine doing all this work. Now, as your, as your route grows and it becomes busier with passengers and cargo, you might want to have an express that goes from Jacksonville to Tallahassee, Tallahassee back to Jacksonville with purely just passengers on that express. And then you can set your other one to just catch the overlap of passengers, Brown Stop, Tallahassee back to Jacksonville, thus making your route more efficient. You can even set the priorities. If you go into this route, and you're in, let's say, the Jacksonville stop, I can go into the Jacksonville stop and I can set a higher pa a priority for passengers and maybe I don't want beer, so I can turn off beer. And I can also say, which track do I want them to use primarily? Like, this is 6%. Let's use the empty one. I can also set minimum and maximum number of wagons that I want to allow them to bring out. So I want them to say, I don't want any more than four cars coming out of Jacksonville. Since I'm only focusing on passengers, I don't want any more than four cars. That way, when they get to Brown Stop, the other four cars that they pick up will be the wheat and the lumber, and they'll go on to Tallahassee. It's kind of a forced thing to make sure that you're picking up at all stops and you're, you're delivering the most efficient. And it'll even tell you what the utilization is as you go through here. Now, if I set it to uh, Express, it's going to be zero utilization because this map has just started. So there's really no passenger delivery. But if I set it to freight, look at that, 70% all right already might mean a, you need a second train. So now that I put a second train on there, you can see my utilization went down. It's now right under 40%. And that's probably a little closer where I want to be is 40%. 
because I want to always make sure that expandability is there so my routes continue to grow and I continue to feed into them. Those are my five tips. What tip worked for you or what tip do you use most? Let me know down in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.